Here's what's been making the business headlines in sub-Saharan Africa this week. China's CMOC Group has agreed to pay $800 million to Congo Jacamine to end a dispute over royalties it pays to the state-owned miner. That relates to CMOC's Tenke Fungarumu mining operation, from which the company said last week it had resumed exports of copper and cobalt. Congolese authorities blocked exports in July 2022, following the dispute. Swiss food company Nestlé says it will be locally sourcing over 40% of raw materials for a new processing plant in South Africa to offset supply chain challenges and cut costs. That's as it opened a processing unit for Nescafe on Tuesday at its factory near Pretoria. As it moves to tap into an increasing demand for coffee consumption in South Africa. Also in South Africa, the country's electricity crisis is weighing on the financial results of the world's biggest producer of platinum group metals, or PGM. Anglo-American Platinum said on Monday that it had deferred production of 66,400 ounces of metal in the first half of the year due to power shortages, nearly 2% of the miners' total 2022 PGM output. That, and weaker metals prices, means Amplatz expects its half-year profit to slump as much as 75%. A better picture, however, for Ethio Telecom. The state-owned telecoms company's chief executive said on Tuesday that profits more than doubled in its latest financial year to around $344 million, as revenue and subscriber numbers rose. Ethiopia's government is planning to sell a stake in Ethio Telecom of up to 45% in a revived privatisation process. And finally, Britain has sanctioned 13 individuals and businesses in Central African Republic, Mali and Sudan, with links to Russia's Wagner Group. Among those sanctioned was the operational head of Wagner in Car and Mero Gold, which the UK said had imported equipment including weapons, helicopters and military trucks.